Welcome back to Femrear Canine Training and on today's video we're going to be answering a couple more questions from you guys to hopefully help answer any problems, challenges or difficulties you might be facing on your canine journey. Welcome back to Fenrir Canine Training. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviourist and I'm the founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Now, this is my wonderful wife, Rachel, and on today's video, she's going to be asking a couple more questions that you guys have sent over to us on Instagram, and hopefully we're going to be able to help you out wherever we can. So without further ado, let's dive into that very first question. Okay, so first question is, how does Sully, a dog who has a big work drive, get along with small children? That's a really interesting question, actually. I love that question. So if you didn't know, by the way, Sully is a uh, Labrador. Um, before we had Sully, we had Roxy. Roxy was our bull mastiff. When she passed away, I wasn't quite ready to bring another mastiff into my life. We were just... we When we were thinking about it, had you just had Dexter? Uh, so Dex was coming up to one, mm. and then he was just over mm. one when yeah. we got Sully. So, so we got Sully as a working Labrador, um, very much working lines, and you can tell that with... Like the person said, obviously you've seen some of our videos where you can see that Sully is an extremely high drive, extremely high energy working Labrador. He's the polar opposite from your more English show Labradors that are super kind of more chill and a bit chunkier. He's very lean, he's very athletic and he is very attached to me, isn't he, as kind of his canine leader and all he wants to do, and I mean all he wants to do is work with me in whatever form that is. That definitely transitions to him not necessarily being in, um, the most loving sweet kind hearted family companion mm. is he definitely fits more into the category of a working dog than a family companion dog now again i'm not kind of um concerned to say it he doesn't really like the boys does he no he he's just not bothered by mm. them and he will allow them to stroke him for a bit and then he'll just get up and leave mm. Yeah, so right. yeah. when people hear me kind of talking about Mastiff breeds and how much I love them, and people get very defensive of their own breeds, but oftentimes that's when they haven't necessarily got the experience of all the different breeds. But when you see it firsthand, it's night and day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A Mastiff breed like a Bull Mastiff, and what Roxy was like is polar opposite with children to what Sully's like. Now, if you've got a breed like Sully, it doesn't mean that there's any concerns. I trust Sully 100% yeah. with our boys. But that's due to excellent socialization, excellent training, um, and excellent leadership on our part. We've been consistent with our leadership from day one. And like I say, Sully is definitely fits more into the category of tolerates our children as opposed to have a deep love for our children like Roxy did as our Mastiff. So I think that if you go down that line, I'm talking breeds like working Labradors, uh, Belgian Malinois, German Shepherds, um, those kind of breeds that are very intense working dogs that are bred to work with a handler all day every day you're going to find yourself probably in a similar situation to what we've got with Sully now that doesn't necessarily make them bad family dogs Sully's an excellent family dog um, but nothing to the extent of say a Mastiff breed which is why we're bringing a Mastiff breed into our lives and then we've got the both because with Roxy, I couldn't necessarily get out and about and do all the exploring and the adventuring yeah. that I like to do with Sully. Um, and so Sully kind of almost selfishly is kind of my working dog, the dog that I can take out and go mountain biking and hiking and mountain climbing with. Um, and the new Mastiff breed will definitely be more of the family companion and family guardian. I think as well, though, like when we were weighing up um, after we had Roxy, we were going for sort of that traditional family pet. Now in England, a Labrador is a traditional mm. family pet, um, along with like maybe a Golden Retriever, that mm. kind of thing. Um, and Sully is that, you know, we've got two active boys who equally want to be out mm. exploring. And if we had gone for another Mastiff breed, then they wouldn't be able to do that with us. So mm. it's finding a balance and finding what's right for your family. And we're in a position where we can have both we can mm. have two dogs so um yeah i think you just have to weigh it up mm. don't you and yeah it's not that he doesn't 
like the boys it's just that he's just not bothered yeah, <laughs> about it's, yeah it's very meh yeah like i say but he's not he's not even like that cuddly with you no. it's not like he he's just not a cuddly dog yeah. i think that's he likes to be near me he likes to be at my feet but even if i was to let him up on the sofa usually he'll come up for a, a minute where only and then he'll get down and lie kind of on his own near yeah. me as or he'll to go me. to the opposite end of the sofa yeah. So. so yeah and, and that's kind of very typical of a, of a very kind of independent confident working breed and Sully's like off the charts on that scale now like I say when we remember the dog that was super passive and timid in the litter yeah. if we'd have gone for that puppy then it probably would have been much different but what I wanted at the time and again it's something I'm very open to talking about with my mental health struggles I wanted a very outgoing confident independent dog that would push me to get out with them and yeah. work them as much as possible because that's very good for me so that's kind of why we temperament selected Sully with the knowledge of Labradors being one of the most reliable dog breeds they might not be the most loving or devoted but they are incredibly trustworthy and reliable so again that's why I talk about breed selection being so important because you have to educate yourself and you have to make that informed decision and with all breeds there's pros and cons there's no yeah, breed there's no perfect yeah. one you yeah. You have to be really honest with your life, your family, your lifestyle, your skill set, your experience, what it is you're looking for. Do your research and then try and best match for that. And at the time, Sully was that and still is. Um, yeah. But it's left a little bit of a hole, hasn't it? Yes. That yeah. the bull mastiff type or mastiff type breeds fit, which is why we're going to be bringing a new mastiff breed but into actually, our house. I think if we didn't have Sully we wouldn't necessarily be going for an English Mastiff. Yeah, again. I would, if we did, yeah, that's a great we, thing. We I probably, probably would go more like a Doberman, I think, would, and I'd try and get the best of both worlds with the knowledge of um, them not being quite as good as Mastiffs, but me wanting a breed that I can get out and work. Yeah. So, but like I said, we're in a fortunate position where we can kind of have the best of both worlds for all of us in our family. I actually think that might bring us on to a second question. Um, someone had asked if we weren't getting um, an English Mastiff, and if we couldn't get a Mastiff, mm. what breed would you get? If you kind of answered that, would you get? Yeah, it would be a Doberman. As well as Sully. Ah, oh, that's difficult. Uh, yeah, probably. What about like a Newfoundland? Yeah, maybe like I might. That? But I want a guard dog. I think there's a part of me that really likes. I want it. Maybe a Rottweiler at that stage. I might lean more down that route. Um, it'd be do it'd be difficult for me to choose against a Doberman just because. I'm in love with Dobermans. The reason I'm not going down the Doberman route is because we've got Sully. Mm -hmm. um, if we, obviously, uh, in the future, Sully, hopefully, um, the English Mastiff will live a long life, and Sully might pass away before that. At that stage, then mm -hmm. maybe I'd have a Doberman and English Mastiff, and that'd be like kind of my perfect two dog combination at that stage. But yeah, if we weren't able to get a Mastiff breed, even with Sully, probably a Doberman. I think would be the choice. Yeah, a Doberman. I think. What about you? If it was down to you um i don't know because i don't know as much about like the specifics of breeds but we did talk about ridisian ridgeback yeah yeah ridgeback would be that'd be really fun would, yeah mm, or sort of obviously child. everyone knows that i like bull terrier yeah yeah english bull terrier <laughs> i'd kind of potentially be open to that a dog that kind of spans both worlds a little bit doesn't it Bull terriers are fun as well i'd, I'd have a bull terrier if we had three dogs and the space for three that'd be an interesting Labrador, English Bull Terrier, Terrier is English cuddly, Mastiff. Like, would they... Yeah, yeah, they are. They're very um, kind of lovable and comedic. You'd really like them. They're, yeah. they're very much Terriers, but they're kind of... Um, They've got personality. Yeah, full of overflowing yeah. with personality. Like they're that. really fun. Yeah, so cool. But we'll, we'll, I know that was kind of two questions, but we'll do one more in this video. Let's throw a bonus one Ooh. in. Okay, so another question. Um, Tips on introducing a puppy to older dogs. Tips for the older dog to accept him into the pack. Again, that's a question I get all the time. People come to me kind of, I think a lot of people worry about this too much. I think if you're bringing a second dog into your home, you have to be confident that the original dog is good with other dogs. Now that yeah. should have come from your socialization, your leadership skills, um, the knowledge of the dog and how the dog interacts with other dogs now if you take a dog out and they're trying to savage other dogs every time they meet them or they're very anxious and fearful of other dogs you probably need to question yeah. bringing a second dog no, into your idea. home but if you bring in you know that when you go out it loves to play with other dogs um, it's well mannered it's well behaved then bringing a second dog in will be usually no problem whatsoever the problem happens when people kind of I, mean, I like use, don't like using this term all the time but they flap 
what mm. you need to do um, in kind of terms of canine behavior it's kind of called the model rival theory I kind of refer to it as um, canine role models the best dog trainer on the wo- in the world by far better than every professional dog trainer on the planet is a good well-mannered obedient relaxed confident dog so if you've got that and bringing a dog in leave them to it let them do it if they start if the older dog starts baring its teeth a little bit starts growling a little bit maybe has a couple of little snaps at it don't interrupt unless you genuinely think that there's causing serious harm Mm. because what they're doing is they're communicating and they're communicating in a very natural way and the older role model dog will be teaching levels of manners and canine communication that we can't even come close to comprehending so if you've got when people were watching the channel when we had mabel as a puppy and she was doing incredibly now not trying to blow my own trumpet but obviously I'm proud of the ability that I had in being able to get her as far as she got so quickly and a lot of people uh, have come to me since obviously they're very sorry about her dying but they're like I really want to be able to do what you did with Mabel and I kind of have to remind some people that yes following my perfect puppy course and going through the boot camp before she passed away was instrumental with that just as much Sully as a role model dog taught her just as much if not more than I taught her Um, again it's a trick that dog trainers and behaviorists use all the time and they try oftentimes they won't talk about it much because they want to get the credit for themselves but having a good role model dog is an incredible opportunity and if you've got one um, then utilize it and let them do their thing don't interrupt just ensure that you're always a good leader to the role model dog and the role model dog understands that even if they're getting involved with discipline in the dog and teaching the dog they still look to you for guidance and direction so they're not kind of leapfrogging you to the leadership position but as long as you've got that nailed down then um, a role model dog is incredible and don't worry if it starts to get a bit growly a bit snappy a bit barky even pinning it on the floor as long as it's not actually hurting it getting to the point where it's ever drawing blood they're just communicating and the older dog's teaching it lessons Sully used to do it to Mabel all the time didn't he also um, I mean we've had other questions about this before and it's just reminded me that when the puppy is making noises grumbling that is majority of the time them wanting to play isn't it we've had a couple of people raise that as thinking that that means that the dog is already something's gone wrong and yeah. they're aggressive or um but like when say if sully was lying down if mabel went up to him and she wanted to play she kind of like make some noises in mm. his face and get in his face a little She'd bit do that with like play bow yeah so she'd drop down into a play bow and she'd do that like, puppy at meh noise yeah. kind of thing. That and was, sometime, I didn't want to make the yeah. noise. <laughs> but sometimes Sully would be like, no, I'm not interested, chill out. And he might have to tell her with his bear in his teeth or a little bit of a grumble. And Mabel had to learn what that meant and to back off and to respect that and to respect boundaries. Um, and sometimes Sully would go, yeah, okay, cool. And he'd reply with his own play bow and his own little noise. Um, it's very easy to misinterpret canine communication um, mm-hmm. and it's, it's something that's quite difficult to teach because it is kind of very high level canine behavior and psychology but it's definitely something that's worthwhile looking into um, and if you trust your older role model dog which you should if you're bringing a second dog into the home then then use that trust and allow them to do their thing it'll be absolutely fine and they need to work that out between themselves and again just make sure that you maintain your discipline and structure and boundaries with the original dog and the puppy dog will watch and will learn from that themselves Mm. and they'll want to replicate the behavior of the role model dog and it just makes things so much easier so just try and relax which is why i always talk about being a calm consistent leader so maintain that consistency with the older dog maintain your leadership but also just remain calm if you start flapping and panicking it's one of the quickest ways to kind of break down that relationship Mm. and the dogs will quickly pick up on that and think well maybe they're is something that I should be worried or panicking about that creates anxiety and fear anxiety and fear very quickly spills over into very negative behaviors and then you're just in a vicious cycle just stay calm and let the role model dog do its thing and you'll be absolutely fine yeah. that's outro isn't it so thank you so much for watching this q and I hope you found it really useful again of did we do the Instagram thing no no 
Thank you so much for watching that Q&A. I hope you found it useful. Now, if you want to ask your questions, make sure you come over to Instagram. Rachel will do a story a couple of days before we film another block of these. Yeah. We tend to film two or three at a time. So you're going to probably do like one story a week, won't you? Yeah. Send in your um, kind of questions. It can be dog training, canine behavior, canine business, personal. We just want to have some fun and hopefully help you guys on the way. So Rachel will save them all and then she'll ask them me. She'll pick some at random and hopefully we'll get through as many as we can. And then over time, we'll build up like almost like an FAQ that there'll be somewhere for you to go at all times to hopefully answer all of your questions. So thank you so much. Like the video, subscribe if you're new here. That little notification bell is really cool as well. So when we upload a video, it'll pop up and be like, that crazy bearded guy's uploaded a video. You should probably watch it. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next episode of Fenrir Canine Training.